I've been trying to install this browser for several months now, and honestly, I haven't succeeded. Initially, only an app image version was available. Now Debian packages and Flatpak have been added, and we've entered beta. Yet the absurd thing is that today, with all these packages available, it's still impossible to install the software on Linux. I've tried it on Void, Debian, and Ubuntu, and definitively, it doesn't work. Reading through the bug reports on the project's GitHub pages, I quickly understood the problem. Look, I appreciate that attempts are being made to release Linux versions of programs, but at minimum, developers should make an effort to test them first. Still, I'm confident that sooner or later they'll succeed. But what I really wanted to talk about goes much deeper than installation issues. We have a new generation of browsers that is literally taking shape and gaining more and more success. I'm talking about Arc and Zen Browser, projects conceived to use existing technologies but with new interfaces and functions aimed at simplicity, modernity, and user-friendliness. Well, Flow Browser fits right into this realm. What I notice is that something significant is emerging here, attempting to fill a substantial void in the browser market, particularly among Chrome alternatives. Regarding Flow, we're talking about a Chromium base, essentially reimagining Zen's interface with some important modifications. What we're seeing with Zen, Arc, and now Flow marks the beginning of a new era in browser development. No longer projects trying to reinvent the web engine as happened in the early 2000s, but experiments that take existing engines, Gecko, Chromium, and wrap them in completely redesigned interfaces. It's a pragmatic choice. Developing a new engine today is almost impossible, too expensive, too complex, while working on user experience is fertile and accessible ground. Flow positions itself as a lightweight yet contemporary alternative based on Electron, and therefore essentially on Chromium. It inherits all the compatibility with websites and Chrome extensions. But its goal isn't to be another Chrome. It's to propose a browsing environment that comes very close to what Zen began experimenting with. Streamlined design, functional sidebars, tabs that organize into spaces, tab suspension functions to reduce consumption, and visual cleanliness that puts content at the center. But there's a substantial difference. While Zen comes from Firefox and therefore carries with it the entire Mozilla world, Flow chooses the Chromium path. This means two things. On one hand, greater stability and compatibility with sites and online services, because we know well that today most of the web is designed for Chrome. On the other hand, however, a loss of diversity. Once again, we find ourselves facing a project that relies on Google's technological monopoly. And here an interesting debate opens. Do we want new browsers that are user-friendly, modern, and innovative? Or do we want to defend technological plurality and support projects that resist Chromium's uniformity? Zen tries to do this with Gecko, but the challenge is enormous. Flow instead accepts the compromise. It gives you a modern experience, but gives up part of the battle for diversity. Another point that distinguishes Flow is how it integrates extension management and additional functionality. The approach mirrors Arc's philosophy. Everything must be simple, accessible, immediate. You don't need to waste time configuring countless hidden menus. The interface itself guides you. And this, for an average user, makes all the difference. Let's look at the general perspective for a moment. For 20 years, the browser market has remained substantially motionless. Chrome took dominance. Firefox lost ground. Safari maintained its niche. Today, suddenly, something moves. Zen, Arc, and Flow don't have gigantic numbers yet, but they're sparking curiosity among more attentive users, and above all, they're bringing innovation back to a sector that seems stagnant. The question then is, will they be able to conquer real market share, or will they remain niche projects for enthusiasts? History tells us it's not easy. Browsers like Vivaldi or Brave brought innovations, but they couldn't dent Chrome's supremacy. However, what we see with this new generation is different. It's not just about adding extra functions, but fundamentally reimagining the interface and our interaction with the web. And it's precisely here that Flow seeks to distinguish itself. These are the features on paper that I would have loved to test on my distribution, but which nonetheless deserve a mention. And maybe they'll push the developers to finally get a Linux installation working and test their software before releasing it for our operating system. 
let me walk you through its key features. Flow embraces profile-based workflows with support for multiple profiles, each with distinct settings and extensions. Perfect if you're juggling work, study, and personal browsing. The Spaces feature organizes tabs into separate containers. Think virtual desktops for your browsing sessions, helping you maintain focus and mental clarity. The sidebar design philosophy centers on immediate access. Bookmarks, history, and settings live just one click away, no diving through nested menus. Pair this with a keyboard-triggered command palette, and you've got instant access to opening tabs, searching history, or bookmarking pages. On the security front, Flow requests confirmation before launching external applications, a small touch that meaningfully enhances protection. First-time users benefit from guided onboarding that walks them through setup in minutes, rather than overwhelming them with choices. Customization runs deep. Personalized icons, configurable new tab experiences, and various aesthetic options let you shape the browser to your preferences. There's even a playful side. Offline mini-games appear when your connection drops. The technical foundations are solid. Complete Chrome Web Store compatibility means access to your favorite extensions, while tab persistence ensures your workspace survives restarts intact. The built-in ad blocker strips away invasive advertising and trackers. Tab sleeping automatically suspends inactive tabs to conserve system resources. Widevine DRM support means Netflix, Prime Video, and similar services work seamlessly. These characteristics make us understand that Flow isn't simply a clone, but an attempt to combine Chromium's solidity with contemporary interface design and functions that put the user at the center. It's currently in beta version, with packages available for Windows, Mac OS, and obviously Linux. But as I told you before, it doesn't work. It's a young project, but it exemplifies this new wave of browsers that don't seek to reinvent the web engine, but to reinvent our relationship with it. In a certain sense, these browsers are trying to do what Ubuntu did in the Linux world, take a solid and already existing base and make it more accessible, more elegant, closer to the common user. It's an attempt to bring the web out of the austerity of old paradigms and into a more fluid, more aesthetic experience, closer to contemporary design sensibilities. Flow, therefore, isn't simply another Chromium browser. It's part of a broader trend, an experiment that fits into a movement seeking to shake up the browser landscape. The very fact that these projects are emerging signals a deeper shift, both technologically and culturally. Users are exhausted by bloated, slow-moving browsers built by massive corporations. Browsers designed by engineers and marketing teams that somehow miss what people actually need day to day. What we really want is simplicity, speed, technical robustness, and privacy. Zen, which I personally adore, and Flow are temporary solutions pointing toward a deeper revolution that's slowly building and will explode in the coming years. We need alternative browsers with optimized, contemporary web engines, independent from tech giants, capable of delivering logical design, simplicity, and interface elegance. Zen and Flow, therefore, are just pieces of a larger puzzle that hasn't yet been completed. The new generation of browsers reveals much about what browsers must become in the immediate future. We'll see if all this will work. For now, What's certain is that a new way of thinking about navigation is being born. Less technical, more aesthetic, but with the risk of sacrificing a bit of the freedom and diversity that the web should guarantee. And the materialization of projects like Ladybird would be the final result, the cherry on top, the way out of a world made of tracking, devoured RAM, and terms of use that have now tired all of us. It's not just about tab browsing and minimal design. It's about giving back to the web what it has lost and bringing it back into users' hands. And for this to happen, I hope that Ladybird releases an alpha version freely accessible to everyone as soon as possible. I'm convinced it would be a huge success, and I hope that after refining the web engine, which is an enormous, almost impossible undertaking, the browser focuses primarily on the interface, because technology isn't everything. It's not the only thing needed to capture users. Flow, Zen, and Arc all demonstrate that the path is there, and that's where Ladybird needs to go, to harvest that type of clean, simple interface that breaks away from the oppressive patterns of Mozilla and Chrome. And then, yes, something disruptive and revolutionary 
could shake up a market that has been stagnant for almost two decades and has, for better or worse, always been dominated by closed and proprietary solutions. Yes, because Ladybird has all the cards on the table to be an enormous planetary success as it intercepts a void that has silently persisted in web browsing for so long now. See you in the next video and may Linux be with you.